All right, question for both of you guys, and I'll give you mine as well. Who is your early pick for rookie of the year? I think it's going to be more competitive than it's been in the last couple of years. Man, it could be Obi Toppin. I, I might have to go OB top and he's going to get a lot of reps. He's a little bit older than the other guys. Do I think he has the upside of some of those other guys? Maybe not, but OB would be a good picker for rookie of the year. I mean, Lamelo's going to get a lot of reps. Seems um, so with hard. Charlotte. So Lamelo has a great chance as well. Um, I like those two for rookie of the year, but my two favorite prospects would be Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton. But those two guys got, uh, I know I picked a lot of guys here, but <laughs> I'd say, uh, <laughs> I'd say I'd say Obi or Lamelo. Top five in the in the draft order. Just give me one. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna lean towards Lamelo. Only thing that stopped me from saying Obi is Knicks don't have a point guard, and the Knicks still have Julius Randle slotted in front of Obi. So if Obi's coming off your bench and he's not getting the same reps that some of these other guys, is Obi coming saying, off the bench for them? Randle starting at the four. As of right now, Randle starting at the four. You got to start Obi. I, listen, I said on draft night, there's got to be a trade involved because it makes no sense if he's going to be coming off the bench behind Julius Randle. And Julius Randle... Just lost my lighting. Go ahead. Julius Randle, who's on an expiring contract, is either going to be flipped to a, a veteran team that thinks he could be the missing piece, or he's going to be showcased so he could be eventually flipped. So Randle's got to move out the way, and we got to get a point guard. So we'll see always starting at some point this season. He might start not start off right. as a starter. Um, right. You know, you know, let Randle get that promo. And they get him out of there, and then by All Star break, then we'll see Obi step into the starting line. Correct, but I think Lamelo, Lamelo got to be the front runner because Lamelo stepping into a situation similar to John Morant. He's gonna have the keys to the car from day one, and he's gonna have the the ability and the freelance capability to just say, "Yo, it's my show," and y'all just gonna have to just ride this wave with me. Nobody's gonna stop Lamelo from doing what he wants to do this first season in Charlotte. I'm going in a different direction than both of y'all. I'm going with the big man, that's big man in the draft. Uh, James Wiseman, and the reason I say that is Naku Okongu or Naku <laughs> No, 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 I'm going with James Wiseman on this one. Uh, the reason why I say James Wiseman is because I think uh, you know, and we spoke about this last week, Eric, he's going into an ideal situation, even without Clay, Clay Thompson. There, um, you still have Steph, you still have Draymond. That's that's a team that's a playoff team without, without Clay Thompson. Now, whether they're the best team in the West is something different, but. When you when you have Wiseman coming into a situation with no pressure, I could see Wiseman averaging twelve and in, in, in ten a game with, with two blocks on, on on that Golden State roster, and, that, and that's enough to get you Rookie of the Year. Nah, I don't, that's not, but it's not gonna be it's not gonna be flashy enough. I'm not saying, no, it is gonna be flashy because he's gonna be catching a lot of dunks. He's saying it's gonna be straight numbers. Yeah, yeah but it, it's deniable. Not, he, he's he's gonna get the big man alley oop lobs and all of that, so it is gonna be flashy. From that standpoint, he, I don't, he's not going to be backing cast down in the paint like Shaq or anything like that. But if as long if, if he does what he's known for doing, he could easily average a double double his rookie season with a couple of blocks and then a couple of highlight dunks. And now that's the rookie of the year. I mean, he has the opportunity. He's going to be on the best team out of anybody drafted in a, in the top five, maybe even the top ten. But I think what's going to end up happening is he also is going to have to compete with minutes like. He's probably going to be their starter from day one, but they ain't going to be playing him 35, 40 minutes a night. Kevon Looney's going to get playing time. Marquise Chris is going to get playing time. They still going to run out small lineups. So he's going to have to really earn his minutes. Anything beyond 20, 25 minutes, he's going to have to earn it. LaMelo's going to get the opportunity every night to wow you. So that's a lot of times that's what draws the fan, uh, the voters in and like, oh, that guy should be the guy. He has less talent to work with. He's putting on a highlight show every night. He's must see TV. He's the guy we're paying attention to. Wiseman 12 and 10 is, is nice, don't get me wrong. But unless it's like a like a crazy 12 and 10, if it's a quiet 12 and 10 every night, it ain't gonna be enough to wow the people. You better hope he comes in and does better than his brother did his rookie year. I Lamelo's better than his brother was. I don't mean he's gonna come in and, and, and play better than, the, than his brother because I think he is. He's still got, a, he's still got a lot of a lot of pressure on 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 him as well. And they're going to be a losing team. So I don't know how crazy it is. If Lamelo shoots it better than he did in the NBL, uh, he has a chance to be really good. <laughs> well, he got he's he's going to be saying He got a broken jump shot as well. He's going to be better. Like I said, we, we love comparing Lamelo because of the last name to his brother. 
I like Kevin, Lonzo. I think he's still going to be all right. I, I think Lonzo is a solid point guard in the league. He, he's never, he may never live up to the hype that his father created, but that doesn't take away from him being a solid player. But LaMelo, been his playing father got two, two sons in the top three. That Crazy. In the top right? three. And, and listen, LaMelo been playing against grown men since he was 15 years old. I don't think he's going to be scared of the NBA moment. I don't think he's going to be, he's going to, he's going to shake at the opportunity to go head to head against some of the best guards in the league. He's not gonna be. He's not gonna be scared at the moment, but he also was not playing competition nowhere near what he's about to face. Because that neither did anybody. Kids. Neither did anybody right. else. None of these kids. Yeah. None of these. Yeah. James. We we call it. You calling James Wiseman a potential rookie of the year? He played two games in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, like we don't we don't know what we getting from James Wiseman. We're going off the the assumption of what he was supposed to be in college, but we didn't even get to see him in college. Yeah, we ain't see much of Melo either. It's not like he was over there going crazy. He was but in a, that, a that Australian player. league. That was like a low he put up. a better. He wasn't playing in the same league as Luca. He wasn't playing in that league. Well, Luca, 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 Luca was playing league. right. He was playing in the same league as RJ Hampton and had better numbers than RJ. I ain't I ain't say RJ Hampton was gonna be rookie of the year either. But but I'm what I'm saying is you you liked RJ Hampton enough to think that he should have gone in the top 15, top 20, right? He did. What I'm saying is he went no, he went oh, 20, he, he went, he went. He went he went, 20, he went 24. 24. 24. Right. Excuse me, he went 24. But I think we all agree. We thought he had enough talent to go in the top 20. So if we were, if we felt his talent was strong enough to go in the top 20 and we feel he's going to be a solid pro, what's stopping us from thinking that the same thing in LaMelo? They played in the same league and LaMelo was- LaMelo has a higher upside. Had a different, different level of exposure than RJ Hampton did as well. They played in the same league. It doesn't matter. His name is is expo- exposure enough. You, LaMelo's play. We've been talking- So, about- so Tripp, are you not a believer in LaMelo? I'm not saying we're not a believer, but I'm just talking about rookie of the year. Who I think is going to be rookie of the year. Who are you not? Who are you not a believer? Right, but that's what I'm asking. That's what I want to know. That's a that's a crazy question, right? Yeah, that is. I got. I got. I got. <laughs> not nah, because you know, believer in Mel. I think I think Lamelo will be good. I'm just I'm just talking about me thinking that Wiseman will be a better candidate for rookie of the year than Lamelo will be. But that's not to, that's not to say I think Melo is going to go in and be whack because I. I like me. That's another guy I had on my on my team in in, in 2K. I know, but what, what I'm saying to you, Trip, is right. When it comes, we know when it comes to these type of awards, people in the voters specifically are enamored with the flashy guy. If if Wiseman is in Golden State and he's putting up 19 and 12, that's different. But 12 and 10 is not going to be enough to wow the people to give him rookie of the year. He's going to have to be more impactful on that team because the first thing. Up? What happened? What is Lamelo putting up? Is he putting up a double double? I don't think if, so. If Lamelo, if Lamelo, if Lamelo's in Charlotte, averaging seventeen and eight, on a team that has far less talent than Golden State, that's more impactful than twelve and ten no, when you're the fourth I option. I don't, I don't think he's he's averaging seventeen. And eight. I, you ask me what you ask me what do I think he's he's going to do? He's going to have the ball in his hands all the time. He's going to have a high usage rate. He is, and I still can't see him averaging seventeen points, eight assists a game. I'm sorry, I can't see that. Okay. They don't even have enough talent around him to say he's going to average eight assists a game. Like I just, I just don't think he has enough scores around the. Well, they got to score at least. I, what, I, at the I, least, I, they're going to score like eighty points, right? I think it'll probably somebody got to get those assists to, to maybe like 12, 13, and five, as opposed. He's going to have. He's going to have. He's going to have one of the highest usage rates we've seen for any rookie, similar to John Morant last year. He ain't no John Morant. I, I didn't say it was John Morant. I'm saying he's going to have that similar usage rate. The yeah, ball's going to be in his hands. I think Eric's all point game. is that he might not necessarily be the best rookie, but he'll have the best chance to win rookie of the year because what? of the usage rate and the flash. Right. Because again, look look at the landing spot. They have a lack of talent. He is the show. He's the guy everybody's coming to see. Not Gordon Haywood, even though they're paying him 120 million. They coming to see LaMelo. And the ball's going to be in his hands all game for at least 35 minutes a night. He's not coming off the court anything less than 35 minutes a night. On the flip side, we we don't even know if Wiseman's going to get to 30 minutes a night. I mean, if that's the case, then we should probably be looking at Killian Hayes more than that. Well, Killian you, has- you, you Wait, you like Killian over LaMelo? Well, I'm just saying, if we're talking about usage rate and how much he's going to have the ball- He's like, not, though, because uh, Derrick Rose is still their lead guard. Derrick Rose- Oh, back to New York? D. Rose? No. Why is that? Well, I wouldn't go that far. He didn't even- no. Actually, he did. He did okay in New York. He no, he didn't. He bailed out on us. And he was okay. He did. Yeah, but he, his numbers was good though in New York. He was when he averaging like uh, seventeen a game for the Knicks. He wasn't that good. But uh, 
looking back on it, I understand why. I know he was dealing with some things. But um, Detroit is, is, I don't even, I don't know if, if Killian Hayes is, is even ready to really be an impactful player this year. Well, I well, think he's more of a project. He's going to have that, that similar uses rate as well. Who? Alberton for, for Sacramento. No, he's not because oh, De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron. Yeah, he's got De'Aaron. He's still got Buddy Hill. It's a good situation for him. They, they, they gonna move. Want to move? Tyrese on. could play off the ball. He was he was a great spot of shooter. <laughs> right. And he could he does a lot no, of things well, so he could yeah, throw in a lot of gaps. A lot there's of no other young guard who's gonna get the usage rate and the, and the freedom that Lamelo's gonna get. There's no other rookie guard. Let me ask you this, Eric: Who's a better basketball player right now, Tyrese or Lamelo? Right now, yeah, Tyrese is more, much more solid than Lamelo is. It's about a shooter. Every, everything. Yeah. What happened? He's better shooter. Than, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a better shooter, but again, it but but I mean it, it could be Tyrese better. is one of the better spot up shooters in the whole draft. Right. That's what Tyrese, saying, yeah. That's what I say. Tyrese be. has Tyrese has parts of his game that are better than Lamelo, but Lamelo has parts of his games that are better than Tyrese. Yeah, they got different strengths and weaknesses. The so thing is though that that we the thing that Lamelo does a lot better than him, Tyrese is still pretty good at. Like, and that's playmaking. The the only they're, they're actually their weakness is actually the same. They're both not ISO scorers. You don't think Melo is a better passer though? He is, but that's definitely not a weakest for Tyrese. Right. Tyrese he's is not, a very, very good passer. Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's a difference between maybe being great and really good. Lame- Lamelo's a special passer. He has special type vision. Uh Tyrese is a very, very good passer. So I think that's the difference. That's why MJ should have some, worked on signing some kind of a big man as opposed to on Hayward and spending all that much money on Hayward. He should have probably found a big man that LaMelo could just kick the ball to. Well, they they just don't have, you could tell they don't have a, a plan in place um, for what they're going to do. Because uh, I was Jordan's actually, coming out of retirement. Wait, are they still signing LaVar too? <laughs> <laughs> if they, if they, they sign LaVar. <laughs> I, I just, again, they, I don't think they have much of a plan in place. They just took the best available player at the time, but they, I don't think they know what they're doing over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Again, that's why I said just because you're the GOAT as a player does not mean you're going to be the GOAT as a, as a GM, as a coach, or as an owner. That's two different things, and we saw that because Phil Jackson is looked upon as probably the greatest coach of all time or arguably the greatest coach of all time. He did not have a good run as GM. though. It just doesn't always pan out that way. So I hope Jordan gets it together because I, I would like to see Jordan be successful as an owner or, you know what I'm saying? But he just, he just hasn't had that type of success. And it's been bad ever since, uh, man, it's been bad for a long Ever since, what's the, what's, the, what's the big man that they shipped out to L.A.? Um, uh, came out of high school. That so, went, uh, Kwame? There you go, yeah. It's been bad since Kwame Brown. Since that I mean, that was... <laughs> That, that was that was Jordan. Bro, we're yeah. not doing we're not we're not doing Kwame Brown right now. Like shouts to Kwame, man. Like he maybe yeah. listens to combos court, but we're not we're not doing that right now. Yeah, that was that was it was just <laughs> a bad situation. But that's what that's where it started from for, with Jordan being like a bad in upper brash. Like that's when it started from the from that draft pick right there. It was like it, it's been downhill from there. Like I don't I don't see any moves. I mean, this was actually I think it was a good pickup drafting LaMelo Ball, but as far as the whole construction of the team, there is none. So I don't like I don't even like how how long is it gonna take to actually get a playoff team right now with the way the roster is constructed? How many years away are they from making the playoffs? Right. Uh, uh I would I would say at least at least four. Cause I just I just I just don't see the cap flexibility to, to go get the impactful players. I like Devontae Graham, I like LaMelo. <laughs> That's I like those like, two pieces. All I know is that OKC is prepared for the future. Well, OKC yeah, plans okay. are holding their own draft. <laughs> yeah. OKC is going to hold their own draft one year. It's going to be a year where they oh, got man. one through ten. That's crazy, right? That's I, crazy. We got you know, our, they, you know, the draft workout is going to be in their gym for yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just come on. Just go five. The combine. The combine is going to be in OKC. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say this though, I, because uh, New Orleans is trying to position themselves similar to that too, with a bunch of picks. But OKC, you know, it's, it's good to see it on paper, but it's only a matter of time before you actually got to actually hit a home run with that draft pick or make the big trade. Because remember, a couple of years ago, Boston had a bunch of draft picks 
and it never turned out to what they thought it was going to be. So it's only but so long as valuable. Well, at least with New Orleans, they have a good young nucleus to go in addition with those picks. Okay, see, we still, like, they're pretty much basing everything they do off of what they'll get in those picks as opposed to New Orleans who already has Zion and Brandon Ingram and, and a couple of other, they got Lonzo still who are all young guys who have potential to be a lot better. Well, okay, see, we, we it's just a wait and see kind of thing. It's just like, all right, you got all these draft picks, but you pick the wrong guys and it don't matter how many draft picks you got if you're picking the wrong guys. Yeah. Smush Parker here, pull me up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real 